After a devastating supernatural apocalypse, the surviving remnants of humanity withdrew into the bowels of the earth, where they claimed one of the few technological marvels that remained of the prosperous pre-event era, the bunker. Sheltered from the inhospitable surface and under the watchful eyes of an Orwellian supercomputer, they carved a new civilization out of the rock that surrounds them. Millions have died, and millions more have been born under a new neon tube sun, never knowing the star that once gave them life. This new home quickly turned into a makeshift prison. Trapped they lie, between the certain death of the invasive blood fauna that is consuming the lower levels, and an uncertain one that awaits them on the surface. For some found purpose, in ensuring the survival of the human race, many others fall deep into nihilism and need to be motivated by fear of death and what may come after. You think that's depressing? Well, the computer certainly thinks. You're in desperate need of a little calming. Bunkers. Sad that we need them, glad when we need them. But what if there was only bunker, and every person in the world was living inside it? Well, that's probably what Reddit user Randomus Plan thought when he made a very special post on the r slash political compass meme subreddit. The political compass. Except you're trapped in a massive, ever-expanding bunker. Many loved it. Some were so intrigued by the concept that they took to the comment section and asked the ever-living shit out of Randomer, who denied answering any questions. Because of that, one friendly Librite created a subreddit exclusively dedicated to discussing the setting. Yes, my dear viewer, this is what this video is, a subreddit review, but there's much more to it, I swear. The EEB in its current form is a collaborative world-building project that manages to seamlessly unite cosmic tragedy with earthly comedy. Its open-source approach to lore is reminiscent of the SCP wiki or the Backroom's archives, two communities that coincidentally also grew out of singular posts that gained a lot of popularity. But while SCP tells its stories through scientific files, and the backrooms are going for an otherworldly explorer vibe, the lore of the ever-expanding bunker is mostly conveyed through memes, especially Vojaks. Rando made a few other gems like this, and then mostly just withdrew from the community, letting it grow like a colony of black mold on improperly sealed yogurt. What I'll be talking about today are the aesthetics of the bunker, a bunch of weird lore that you should be known about, and, at the end, a little side tangent about the community itself. So without further ado, let's get this started. All of the contents being community sourced means that the ever-expanding bunker borrows most of its aesthetics from multiple pieces of post-apocalyptic and supernatural media. The big five are Fallout, Glukowski's Metro series, Stalker, Warhammer 40k, and even Annihilation. Had I to describe the atmosphere of the bunker in an orderly array of letters, they would probably form the word oppressive. But disparity is a solid third place. Weapon quality ranges from shift to automated plasma cannon that causes widespread blackouts in the lower levels when it's used. Living conditions range from luxury suites for the ultra wealthy over Soviet apartment complexes to Neanderthal. Food quality can be similarly diverse, with nutrient-enriched bars of non-dubious origins filling up 90% of the average food pyramid. To summarize, for most of the 100 to 200 million people that call the bunker their home, life does absolutely suck. Well, you might ask yourself now, how did humanity end up in such a dire situation? This is where we come to the event, as it is ominously called. Since officially nobody ever left the bunker and the computer knows better than to let any video footage of the surface get leaked, it's everyone's best guess to what actually happened. What we can assume is that it is supernatural in nature and that it made human life on the surface unsustainable, if not physically impossible. Could be an ice age, or the zone from Stalker, or even a hoax concocted by the conservative media, but most people just go with giant interdimensional tentacle monster, of course. Now about this bunker itself. It's segmented into levels, as bunkers so often are, each one serving a special purpose, like farming, housing, water purification, producing tech, food, and even people. Living closer to the computer, in the higher levels, means that you'll have a comparatively good life. 
but he will struggle under the constant supervision of zealous computer enforcers. I won't hesitate to invite you over to a cup of calming tea at the computer rehabilitation facility. In the lower levels, people can pretty much do as they please, as long as they fulfill their work quarters, of course, but there is always a chance a mutated addict will rip off your arm. You'll have to replace it with a pair of thongs you fished out of the trash. The computer claimed to have once controlled at least 4,000 floors, which is extremely impressive, assuming that one level would be at least 2.3 meters. That would make the lowest levels of the bunker deeper than any hole ever drilled by humans, because our equipment kind of starts melting at these kinds of temperatures. Well, doesn't matter. There are only a few hundred levels being inhabited now, due to this little thing called the Maw, where the anti-reality started leaking from the surface into the lower levels, making around 85% of them uninhabitable. Had the computer not gained access to an interdimensional space called the Clown Room, the Maw would have claimed the entire bunker. But even after Hume levels have returned to normal, whatever that means in this universe, recolonization of the lower levels is still somewhat difficult, due to... Well, that's where the flesh comes into play. Flesh? Yes, lots of it. The deeper you go, the more floors, walls and people are covered in it. Eat it, you'll get a tumor and die. Step into it, your mind will join the collective consciousness. A sure way to find out if there are any flesh infestations nearby is the appearance of so-called blood fauna. And I don't know about you, but seeing plants and animals made out of viscera and tendrils that are constantly leaking and reabsorbing blood is a sure sign that I should get out as fast as possible, regardless of the situation. However, in the case that you've lost your common sense to boredom already and don't want to pass on a free high, why don't you inhale some of the fumes they give off? Don't worry, it's all natural, but don't overdo it either, because there's a small but not insignificant chance that you'll turn into an aggressive gigahobo that brings along Armageddon or something. Okay, I think you have to elaborate on that one. Whirlers, named after their natural propensity to whirl, are the natural evolution of fume addicts. Not dissimilar to species that we have here on Earth, whirlers are known to adhere to a strict social hierarchy based on how many mental illnesses they've been able to cultivate. They're seen lurking around in ventilation shafts, scavenging for food, water, stuff that can be turned into an improvised shank, unattended children, or midgets. If you're not part of the fun-sized snack variant of human, however, they won't threaten you physically, and they will most likely just scour off into their fume dance. But that arguably makes them even worse. Think about it. They literally live inside of your walls, popping out ever so often just to let you gaze into their bloodshot, twitching eyes. Whirlers can't talk, but even without moving their mouths, they can still deliver a message. One of dread. One of hopelessness. Don't think about it too much. As if your sanity declines, you're bound to join them. I think it's time to get into the real meat and potato, I mean uh, food rations and moss you scraped of the concrete walls of the ever-expanding bunker. The expanded 9 by 9 political compass. A true testament to man's inability to touch grass. Let's start right at the top of both the bunker and the compass. The good old computer. Despite its central role in keeping the bunker in order, the machine's functions properties and goals are still shrouded in mystery. Could be a sentient supercomputer embedded with a corrupted version of Asimov's three laws of robotics, or a post-singularity god in a box that can only be interacted with via a text terminal. Or maybe its thinking is just so far above ours that the flawed logic of the average flesh puppet is simply incapable of comprehending why building a <laughs> avatar for itself is worth investing more resources into, while people are starving and men under 5 foot 10 live under constant fear whenever they approach a ventilation shaft. The influence of the computer can be felt in every corner of the bunker. In this planned economy, the computer decides whether you spend your workday mining out new sectors for future habitation, policing on levels where the murder rate is higher than the birth rate, 
or beating up Wurlos, with weapons that are in worse shape than theirs. The computer also cracks down on any form of barter, by having the official currency be ration credits, where one credit equals your entire dietary needs for one day. In this universe, that's like wanting to buy a pack of gum at the gas station, but only having like three Atlantean gold coins, two nails from Jesus' cross, and the entire classified MK Ultra catalog in your pockets. To simplify the myriad of other factions and characters a bit, we can broadly separate them into two categories. Those who generally work with the computer, and those who just need to be a little calmer. On the computer we've got guards. Guards who've been f***ed over. Cybernetically enhanced super guards who protect the computer's hardware. People who worship old world mascots. Department heads, miners, engineers, militiamen, micromanagers and their industrial slaves. Three separate paramilitaries, made up of tomboys, femboys and zoomeringers, who have so much lore surrounding them that they all deserve their separate videos. And of course, professional coomers. Those who oppose the computer are a pretty diverse bunch too. They're crackheads, advanced crackheads, commies, crack farmers, the old world aristocracy, commies again, sink piss, I mean flesh cultists. People trying to teach the concept of humanity to a metal box that is probably still running Windows Vista, escape artists, and the Tea Party. If the Tea Party was literally worshipping the invisible hand of the free market and a manifestation of human greed. So yeah, basically just the Tea Party. As the bunker expands, living standards fall, and wealth disparities become more apparent, the balance of power will gradually shift away from the computer. Once the list of its enemies eclipses the establishment's reserves of calming tea, threats will be exchanged, and deals will have to be made. The last remnants of humanity will enter a cold war, a wet powder keg, slowly drying in front of a roaring fire. At the front line of every conflict stands the ordinary people, just out to make a living. My personal favorites are Shane Bloomington, the xenobiologist, he looks like he's found his true purpose in life, and I respect that. The blood sports organizer, because it's pretty darn accurate to think that people would immediately turn to gladiatorial combat when the internet's down for more than two weeks. Terminator on rollerblades, self-explanatory, and Magic Kid, who is a restraining order against Shane, ensuring that there must at least be three names separation between the two. Cannons because nobody can decide on a common course of events in these kinds of products. They're pretty fleshed out though, so I'm not seriously complaining. Status quo canon, basically the scenario I just described. No big events, just the deathly spectre of conflict, consuming and remolding society in its own image. Death of the computer canon. So basically, it turns out that all crackheads have a psychic connection to the squid monster on the surface. Once their numbers are swollen enough to the point where they can reach critical mass, they will overrun most of civilization before merging into the Taken, which then in a final fuck you to the bunker, demolishes the computer before dying. The survivors have no other choice but to rebuild civilization on the surface, where they are greeted by a new ice age. Water retake the surface cannon. Basically that. Luxury cannon. Capitalism saves the day and brings prosperity to all levels of the bunker. Also, the free market demons start manifesting physical. <coughs> Deep Dark Cannon. Computer officially runs out of juice. Human civilization is plunged into a literal dark age. Coalition Vision. The old world aristocracy regains power and leeches off of the common folk even harder. The surface is a life cannon. As below, so above, I guess. Whirler cannon. Crack leaks into the water supply, turning everyone into a whirler. And lastly, my personal head cannon. The event was an inside job. There's no way an interdimensional being could get from one end of the multiverse to the other one in a mere 13.8 billion years. If you now feel compelled to visit the subreddit r slash everexpandingbunker, then that's great, but it should still give you a basic rundown on what you can expect. 
While it is true that the sub provides you with weird, intriguing, and well thought out characters and droves, there are also posts that are of a much more silly nature. Ridiculous characters, meta jokes, and that one weird Russian guy whose posts are equal parts incomprehensible and esoteric. All of those contribute just as much to the overall vibe of the project as the super serious ones. The tone is all over the place, and that's what makes this community special in my opinion. If you're still unsure whether your post about that cool new faction or vote check you came up with will fit in, just browse the sub for a while, and you'll get the vibe pretty quickly. Or you can just, you know, make a video about the fandom and sneak in your own stupid OC factions. Not that I'd ever do that or something. Hope you enjoyed my first real video. If you have any future topics for me to cover, just leave them in the comments. I appreciate every form of feedback. Leech out.